again. Oh, lift your hands tonight, church, and sing. At the cross, you took my place. You traded death so I can live again. I can live again. Oh, sing it again at the cross. redemption our salvation on Calvary's cross and we don't have to do anything more other than trust in his perfect sacrifice for our sins we can come into the presence of God partake of his spirit and be refreshed and renewed as we rejoice in all that he's done for our lives he always leads us the Bible says, into victory. He wants to lead you into victory tonight. You're in a good place this evening. Amen. God's going to minister to many needs. We are excited about all that God is going to do. And we want to go before the throne of God tonight and just lift up a number of needs. We want to pray for Ashton Heideman. He's having a tumor removed on August 16th. And so we want to pray for God's grace and that surgery. God would guide the doctor's hands and just have his uh, overshadowing that. We want to pray for Sister Kathy Cervantes uh, for healing for stomach issues, that God would touch her life this evening. Luz Hadegi, uh, continued healing from colon cancer. God would touch her, uh, her life. We want to pray for anointing on Evangelist Beauregard tonight. We Sunday night revival service. We can feel the presence of God. He's already moving in people, and we are believing for a great breakthrough tonight. How many of you here tonight, you're believing God, amen, for good things in your life tonight. You're believing for a breakthrough. We're going to go before the throne of God tonight, and, and then I'm going to ask Brother Gio Vialba, if he'll come to the platform, open our service in prayer tonight, amen. Father, we come before you, God, amen, through the blood of Jesus tonight, God, believing you. God, for great and mighty things, even in our midst, God, that you would pour out your spirit, uh, hallelujah. Lord, Father, God, thank you for allowing sinners that you call son and daughter into your house so that we can magnify your name, Lord, Father, God. We present you needs. We present you needs that we ask you to move in, Lord, God. Buddha can't do what you do. Allah can't do what you do. So we pray to you, Father, God, and we expect you to move. God, we pray that every word that comes out of this pulpit is spirit-filled and into hearts, and it makes heart burn for you, Lord Father God. Begin to stir and revive, Lord Father God. Tonight is the night of revival, Lord, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You can greet one another before you sit down. We want to welcome everybody tonight. Whether you're joining us here in person or on live stream, 
you, you're here at a good night. Amen. Evangelist Larry Beauregard is going to be ministering shortly, but we do want to make you aware of some things that uh, are happening this week. we got a lot going on this week, and so uh, don't miss out on the good things that God is doing. I want to remind you that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in the prayer room, we're having a prayer room on Monday nights. Uh, between 7 and 8 o'clock, and there will be a short time at the end. It's an exhortation and probably a, a, a group prayer with Brad Breckenridge. And so if you have any questions on that, you can see him or call him, and that would be a great blessing. Also, Tuesday night, there's an outreach at Cardinal Park. I guess it's now called Ebony Marie Moody Park. It's on Cardinal, just south of Valencia. Most of you know where it is. If you have any questions, it's on the website. You can tap into the events, uh, and it gives you the location of the outreach. That's Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And then Wednesday night, Pastor Gabe Ruby will be preaching and sharing testimonies from boot camp from different people. So that's going to be a great night. To, amen to hear all that God did last week in boot camp. Uh, Friday night launches our official House to House Ministries Bible Study. We're finally getting going after many dangerous toils and snares, I would say, or just delays and all kinds of things that happened and COVID outbreaks and different things. But now we're really getting going. And so Friday launches our first official House to House. If you are interested in belonging to a group, you can go to our website. The addresses for the different Bible studies are in there. If you need a recommendation for a Bible study, you can see me or anybody on staff, and they can direct you to one in your area and that would fit your needs. So that'll be a great blessing. A week of from Wednesday, uh, Pastor Greg Farrell will be here preaching the Wednesday night service. Uh, he's really coming in for the marriage retreat uh, and Thursday and Friday night at the West in La Paloma. You don't have to have a room there to go to the marriage retreat. Uh, you can go and just go to the marriage retreat and, and then, you know, go about your way. So it's not, you don't have to rent a room to be a part. But these are great blessings. We do these every year. And it's just powerful times where... We, our marriages are strengthened. Pastor Greg Farrell, amen, is a masterful teacher of the Word of God and really great in these type of settings. And so you don't want to miss out. That's next Thursday and Friday at uh, 7 o'clock. I think it's on Thursday and then 6 o'clock on Friday night. So remember that. And um, amen. A lot going on, but it's exciting to have a lot of church where a lot's going on. And and, and you can partake in all kinds of different things and such a variety of ways to serve God and a variety of ways to be ministered to. And so take advantage of those things. Amen. We're going to receive an offering if the ushers would come tonight. I was reading a scripture today, and it's out of the New Living Translation in Proverbs 21, verse 26. It says, some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. And I thought about that, that greedy people are always looking for an angle to acquire more, and they don't want to part with anything. But God's people are just the opposite. They're always looking for ways to give. And, and you know, sometimes God's people get creative about trying to make more money, trying to uh, uh, get more resources, but not, but not just out of greed, wanting to prosper yourself, wanting to prosper your family. There's nothing wrong with that, but also wanting to, God, I want to give more. I mean, have you ever been motivated, um, you know, you've been motivated by, hey, I, you know, I want to give more. I don't want there's something I could do to make extra money and and I know my own life that's been true throughout my walk with God is, hey, maybe I could work a little overtime and, you know, do different things where I could give a little more to God. Because there's a desire when you get saved that, hey, I don't want to hold back more. God, I want to give to what you're doing. I want to be a bigger, I want to have a bigger investment in what you're doing in the earth, what you're doing in my church, uh, uh, what you're doing in the saving of souls. And so let that spirit, amen, get upon you. And God will bless your life. Um, amen. Brother Arturo, would you ask blessing upon gift and giver tonight? Power's real, anything can happen, any problem you will. 
something very good, something good is going on around you. There's a light that shines, makes the dark disappear. Power at work, but there's nothing to fear. Something very good, something good is going on around you. This is a church on fire, this is the Holy Spirit place. We have a burning desire to lift up Jesus' name. Let the fire burn in every heart, like the way defeat the dawn. Let the flame of love burn higher. This is the church, this is the church on fire. Holy Spirit is here and His power is real Anything can happen, any problem we will Something very good, something good is going on around you There's a light that shines, makes the dark disappear Power at work, but there's nothing to fear Something very good, something good is going on around you This is a church on fire This is the Holy Spirit place We have a burning to lift up Jesus' name Let the fire burn in every heart Like the wind to beat the dark Let the flame of love burn higher This is the church This is the church on fire This is the church on fire This is the Holy Spirit place We have a burning desire To lift up Jesus' Church, this is the church on fire. Let the fire burn in every heart. Light the way to beat the dark. Let the flame of love burn higher. This is the church. This is the church on fire. Let's welcome Pastor Boulevard as he comes to minister tonight. you have your Bibles tonight, let's open them up to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. How many love the Word of God? It is so rich and it is so powerful. And I want to start this evening reading out of Genesis chapter 1 verse 12, one verse of Scripture. And it says, and the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the seed that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And you wonder, what in the heck am I talking about here with this scripture? Well... I'm third to the oldest out of eight kids. There's ten in my family when I grew up. And in the spring, every year, my father would prepare the ground and we would have this big garden. And each one of us kids got to go to the store and pick out a package of seeds that we wanted to grow. Radishes, watermelon, cantaloupe carrots, and I'll never forget, and this goes back first or second grade, going out every day after I planted that seed, just waiting for that something to happen, and after a while, this little tender little shoot comes up out of the ground, and I would stand there and look at that, amazed that whatever I put in the ground is now growing. It's alive. The proof of the planting was that little tender shoot coming from the earth. And I want you to hold on to that thought throughout the night if you can, because I have something to say out of the Word of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16 says these words, Now to Abram, and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, 
but as of one and to your seed who is Christ. Let's bow our heads in the presence of God. Father, I ask you to open eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to understand your word, that we may have revelation tonight in what it is to be a Christian and live this life for you. I commit all things into your hands and I believe you to touch lives. I pray for truth that not only sets us free, but keeps us free daily in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. Amen. So I want to look with you tonight at a message I've entitled, The Seed of Christ. I've never preached a sermon on this before. I have, to my memory, have never heard a sermon preached on the seed of Christ. But I want you to pay close attention to the scriptures tonight because everything we have here tonight depends upon God's word. We live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Do you believe that tonight? And in order for us to tune into what God says, what God is doing, is we tune into his word. And the seed of Christ has a history. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, God began to deal with them. And he spoke to the devil who had tempted them. And in Genesis 3.15, he says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the first prophecy in all of Scripture. God spoke this prophecy, and he was speaking about her seed. Singular, not plural, but singular. That word is singular. He was speaking concerning the virgin birth, and God spoke this, uh, and so this is the first prophecy. God was foretelling the coming of the Christ that was coming to redeem and to reign. Now, we mention Jesus Christ in prayer. We mention Jesus Christ when we talk and we throw it out very loosely sometimes. First thing I want you to understand tonight is Christ is not his last name. His name is Jesus. And the word Christ means the anointed. So every time we say Jesus Christ, we say Jesus the anointed or the anointed one. Now this seed was spoken by God in the garden. The next time we hear about the seed, it was shown to be the seed of Abraham. And this seed of Abraham was also in the singular tense, was not plural. And when God spoke to Abraham about the seed of Abraham, he was taking the anointed one and who was being spoken into this world and now he was bringing it into a family, into the Hebrew family. So the seed started off as something for the human race. Uh, Now it's located into the Hebrew race. And then later on we read about the seed uh, that is shown to be the seed of David. Not only is the anointed one coming into the world uh, and belonging to the Hebrew family, uh, but uh, he is also part of the Hebrew royal family. If you read Matthew chapter 1, you will read about the genealogy of the seed. And it starts with Abraham and it just works its way all the way through until Jesus is born. The seed, singular. In Galatians chapter 3, Paul is telling us that the use of the word seed is very deliberate. 
It was a deliberate choice that he used to draw attention to Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. It's designated as the seed of Abraham. Abraham's son, Isaac. He was born and it was a supernatural birth. The seed passed from Abraham to Isaac and he was a miracle birth and it was all in response to Abraham's faith. Paul in dealing with the church at Galatia carries this thing further. Uh, he said the true seed is Christ. Jesus was the one to whom this promise had pointed to. Every promise in the Bible centers around Jesus the Christ. Uh, and to share in the promises of God, uh, you're going to have to belong to Christ. In Galatians 3.29 and if you are Christ, uh, then you are Abraham's seed uh, and heirs according to the promise. Paul was writing to the Galatian church because he said, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has cast a spell over your mind? You are saved by grace. And yet you've allowed these people to come in and say, Well, grace is fine for you Gentiles, but if you really want to be close to God then you need to obey the law and you need to be circumcised like us Jewish folk. You need a little bit more. And Paul's dealing with this. Paul was one of the most brilliant minds of Scripture in his day. And when he got saved, knocked off his horse, and he spent... 14 years away from the church and everything, alone with God. And he said, I took all of my knowledge of Scripture and I counted it as being manure. That I may know Christ. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. He had a revelation that took all of his knowledge of God to the Scriptures and just threw it out and then began to reread it with this revelation of who Christ is. So he's speaking to the Galatian people and he says, "Who? you're foolish. You've been so free. But all of a sudden you're being made to feel guilty because you're being told you need a little bit more. Can I tell you something tonight? When Jesus died on that cross, uh, one of the last things he said is, it is finished. The price has been paid in full and it is finished. You cannot add to it. Uh, you cannot take away from it. It is finished. Paul starts bringing the law into this chapter 3. You see, the law is always making demands, but has nothing to give. The Judaizers were teaching that salvation was a combination of faith and works. But if you study out the scriptures, Old and New Testament, if you are depending on any kind of works for your salvation, the Bible says you are under a curse. To avoid uh, this spiritual curse, uh, you're going to have to refuse to depend upon the law for salvation because that is something we do. It's all outward. I do this and I do that. We need to do this and we need to do that. A lot of Christians today, their whole life is revolved around do, 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 do instead of be, 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 be. We walk in the finished work of Christ on Calvary's cross. That is where Christianity is. And Paul wanted to make it absolutely clear that we're justified only by faith, which is something inward, not by merit, not by good works, not by moral excellence, 
Those are good things, but that's not what our salvation depends upon. All the promises God made to Abraham are fulfilled by Jesus, the anointed one, and is given to every one of us. You see, Jesus' sacrifice was for every one of us to become what was for every one of us because Paul wrote in chapter 3, verse 14, so that Christ, in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. If you're not Jewish today, you're a Gentile. That's pretty simple. In fact, all the things of God are simple. Boy, girl. Anyway, moving right along. You see, Abraham did not make a promise to God. God made the promise to Abraham. And so many times we're crying out to God and we're making all these promises. You cannot add to salvation. We are saved because of the grace of God. And that's where we got to walk in. You see, God God made the promise to Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. God never breaks his promise. Joshua chapter 21, verse 45, not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. And so promises depend upon 100% upon God. It's not what we do. We are saved by grace through faith. It's not what we have done. It's what he has already done. When this church was running 80 to 100 people, sometime in 1975, we had a preacher that came to preach and our church was just exploding. You know, when we were running 50 people, we averaged over 500 conversion cards a year in that little church. And our church was just exploding in growth, but the spirit of revival was so powerful in that place. And I'll never forget that, of, that evangelist that was preaching. It was second to the last night he was there, and he began to prophesy at the end of the service And over and over and over again, he said, you think you've done something to make this happen? You have not done anything to make this. This is what I am doing. We want God to move. We long for God to move. I live for revival every day. I've walked in revival for almost 49 years. I know revival. I know the hand of God moving. I have experienced this all over the world, and it is powerful. But I also understand I haven't done any of this. God does it. When someone gets healed, I didn't heal them. I can't heal nobody. God did that. When someone gets totally transformed by the power of God, he did that. I didn't do that. I've pioneered churches and seen God move and, and, and seen the spirit of revival take loose in those churches, uh, but I didn't do that. Well, how, what did you do to make this happen? I don't know. Because we don't know. God did that. And God does what he does in our lives. And so Paul is making a point here, uh, and he, for, to, to fulfill the full, excuse me, the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, it does not reside in the Jewish people and it does not reside in the law or the Ten Commandments. It all resides in Christ, the anointed. In Galatians 3.18, for if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. 
In other words, uh, the law and, and the promise cannot be mixed or combined uh, to secure our salvation. Our inheritance, our salvation is 100% dependent upon what Jesus did on that cross at Calvary and nothing that we've done. See, the law is always about our performance. But grace depends upon God's promise. And God has set it up for us to live for Him in love and faith. Not by law and fear. He wants relationship with us. And in the same context as the promise He gave to Abraham... That is where you find life. Not in the context where he gave the law. You see, the law cannot and was never intended to give life. And law is us working under our own power, our own strength, our own will. You need to do more of this. You need to do more of that. I need to do this. I need to, man, I'm just, how many's felt guilty about stuff? You just don't feel like you add up. And your, your mind, your attention is more upon, I'm not doing this enough. I'm not doing that enough. I need to do this more and I need to do that more. No, no, no. What we need to do is get our eyes upon Jesus and pursue Christ. When you begin to do that, that other stuff begins to fall aside. This is where victory is found. You know, we were just hippies that got saved. We had a new language. How you doing, brother? Got the victory. We never talked like that before we were saved. It was a new language. And it still is a new language. And so we are saved through faith alone. God's pleasure in us is based upon what Christ has done, not based upon what we do. And as we put our trust in Christ... We are accepted by God and we are alive to Him. So in Galatians chapter 3, you read that Paul covered 2,000 years of Old Testament history from Abraham through Moses to Christ, all in one chapter. He was a brilliant scholar. The climax of all of history, not just biblical history, all of history, the climax is all centered around Jesus, the anointed. We have B.C., before Christ, and A.D., 2022, A.D., after death. Still with me tonight. And so, the promise given to Abraham was powerful. The law was given to Moses. That was powerful also. But the law was our schoolmaster. It let us know that we're sinners. And also let us know that we never added up. We cannot keep all Ten Commandments our whole life. We've all broken them somewhere along the line. That means that we're sinners. When somebody says, you're a sinner. Oh, yeah, I'm a sinner. Ha, 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 ha. No. When you have revelation of what God says, you're a sinner. And you will die and go into eternity. And if you die without God, eternity's not going to be fun. See, Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses. He completed all the promises to Abraham. And that's why salvation only comes through Christ. So what is this seed of Christ? When you are born again by the Spirit of God, you are forgiven of all your sins, uh, and Christ is birthed within you. You are born into the kingdom of God. You, now you are a child of the king. Royalty. Still with me? The moment you give your life to Jesus, you are partakers of his divine nature. Now the kingdom of God 
The entire kingdom of God is based upon relationship. When we get saved, give our life to Jesus, and we now have open communication with the living God. That's vertical. But when we give our lives to Jesus, he puts us in contact with other believers. That's horizontal. And the whole kingdom of God revolves around relationship. That being said, everything within the kingdom of God moves by faith. And the moment you surrender your life to Jesus Christ and are forgiven of your sins and are born again by the Spirit of God, this seed of Christ is at work in your life and it has everything to do with faith. Abraham, married to Sarah for a long time. She's 90 years old, had been barren all those 90 years, unable to bear children. Abraham's 100 years old. Is that old? He didn't one day wake up and go, Sarah, darling, come, I've got faith today. <laughs> he didn't do that. The Bible says he believed God, it was accounted unto him as righteousness. He lived faith daily. And faith isn't this conscious thing, oh, I've got to have faith. You know, you, faith is simply believing what God says. It's that simple. When we give our life to Christ, we believe what Jesus has done for us. And so Abraham's 100, she's 90, and all of a sudden she's pregnant. That's a miracle child. Why? Because he's a child of promise. The seed was now going from Abraham to Isaac, the seed who is Christ. David, in the lineage of the seed, a young man goes out to the army of Israel and he's standing on the hillside along with the whole army and the whole army is shaken with fear and trembling while Goliath is down in the valley. Come on, send me a man out here. And every one of them shook with fear and trembling but David that had that seed in him, he heard differently. He felt differently. He said, is anybody going to go after this guy? Well, you don't understand. No, no, none of that matters. What matters is who Christ is. He went down that hill. And when Goliath saw him, he says, you, you mock me? You send this kid? But that kid never slowed down. Never took his eyes off Goliath. Just kept coming right at him. Not intimidated. And finally, Goliath says, come a little closer, and I'm going to feed you to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And David said, no, I come in the name of the Lord my God, whom you have defied today. And the only one's dead is you. The seed was at work. He didn't go around and fast and pray, trying to get some faith. He walked in that faith. He walked in what God said. Jesus came to the disciples one day. They were baffled. A man had a demon-possessed boy, and the boy wasn't getting set free. They couldn't cast the demon out. And Jesus said, oh, faithless generation. How long am I going to be with you? How long am I going to bear with you? Bring the boy over here. And Jesus told that man, if you believe, all things are possible to them who believe. And the man said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. 
And Jesus cast the demons out of this boy and that dumb boy began to speak, totally healed and delivered by the power of God. And the disciples are looking and he said, these don't come out but by fasting and prayer. Let me tell you, I've cast lots of demons out over the years. And when a demon manifests, you can't say, time out, I got to fast and pray. (laughs) No, what you have to do is be who you are in Christ and command that thing to go. You don't have to lose your voice. You don't have to get wore out because you're trying to hold down this demon-possessed person and they're wearing you out. It's like one of the brothers in Namibia told me, he says, yeah, he says, I got a call. And they said, you need to come over, brother. We got a demon-possessed person here. He gets over there that four hours. You got eight guys for four hours, one woman in there, and they're trying to hold her down. They're exhausted. They're so sapped of strength. He comes in there and looking, and, 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 they're, you know, and they're saying, help us here. We're, you know, and the demon spoke out of that woman and said, you guys tired yet? You want to know something? When a demon manifests around me, I just say, hold your peace and come out. And they do. Because it's who Christ is in me. It is the seed at work through my life. See, Jesus paid the ultimate price. For by grace are you saved through faith. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, by Christ alone. He is the seed of Abraham. So let's look at the power of the seed for a moment. A seed, if you look at any seed, it's going to produce like the same thing that it came from. In other words, that seed, if it came from a watermelon, you plant it, it's going to grow more watermelons. It won't grow oranges. Amen? But take the seed and you put that hard seed in the ground. You bury it. And once the seed goes into the ground and is buried, all is darkness around that seed. But the moisture from the ground begins to soften that hard outer shell and a miracle of life begins. And everything that seed needs It draws from the darkness around it. It doesn't matter how heavy the earth is sitting on top of it. It begins to grow. The most tender little shoot can make it through all that soil and come to the surface and begin to grow. The seed. The proof of the planting is that little shoot coming up from the earth. When you are born again, the life of Christ is planted within. That life is surrounded by darkness, our darkness. And yet, if we begin to read his word, we begin to pray and build a relationship with God, We get in church and hear the word of God preached. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God gives every person, every man, a a, a measure of faith. Faith comes from God. In the scripture it says, have faith in God. But if you study it out, it has, literally means, have the faith of God. The moment you are born again and the seed of Christ is within you, faith is there. You want to add to your faith? Go after God's word. And his life begins to grow inside you. You say, oh, I'm a mess. If you only knew, we don't want to know. God knows. 
And you want to know something? From whatever it is you've been involved in, from whatever it is in your past, God can draw from all of that and Christ begins to grow forth life from heaven. Mark chapter 4. Verse 26 through 29, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter, scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. The moment we are born again, we are in Christ. Over the last 15 to 20 years, I've had many pastors that I've preached for, and they go, you keep mentioning in Christ, in Christ. What does that mean? These are pastors asking me, what does that mean? Let me tell you something. That phrase, in Christ, is found 80 times Eight zero, eighty times in Paul's epistles. The phrase in him occurs about 30 times. So to me, that's pretty significant. It means something. We need to learn what it is to be in Christ. When we receive Christ by faith, we are spiritually baptized into Christ and we put on Christ. Galatians uh, chapter 3 verse 27, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. It is not our life, it is his life we're living. So spiritually speaking, this means God will never see us uh, without our in Christ clothes on. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we have all been made to drink into one spirit. Paul summarizes the third chapter of Galatians in verse 29, and if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is Christianity. Jesus, the anointed one, he is the true offspring. He is the true seed of Abraham. When we place our faith and trust in him, the Holy Spirit makes us one in Christ uh, and we become the true offspring of Abraham and now we live a life uh, and this life that we live is his life being lived through us by faith. Uh, we are heirs of God uh, and we are joint heirs of Christ uh, and we have uh, power to live for God. He's given us everything we need. The seed of Christ opens up great possibilities. Are we perfect? No. Do, I, do we understand it all? No. The night I got saved, I didn't know nothing. But Pastor Warner says, pray this prayer with me and believe with all your heart. And when I finished praying, I was broken before God. Born again by the Spirit of God, never, ever to be the same. And I knew nothing, but I believed, and the seed was put in me. James chapter 5, verse 7, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Out of the darkness comes forth life. His life. And if we will spend our time pursuing God, longing for all that God has, this life will begin to shine forth. See, one of the things that I always had from when I got saved, I'd be talking to people about Jesus and people would say all the time, what is it about you that's different? I've talked to other Christians, but there's something alive in you. What? It's Christ in me. That's what it is. And the more we pursue Christ in our life, the more we seek his face, the more we just w learn to walk and live Christ daily, powerful things begin to happen. One of the phrases that we hear a lot about is breakthrough. 
Did you get your breakthrough? I got my breakthrough. Really? It's all about you, is it? The real breakthrough comes when Christ begins to be seen in your life. Out of the darkness of your past, everything you've chosen to believe God, He's given you faith, walk in that faith, grow that faith by His Word, and allow that to happen inside you and all of a sudden people begin to see something different about you. What is it? It's Christ in you. That's what they're seeing. The shoot has come forth. The seed has been planted. John chapter 4 verse 12 chapter 12 verse 24 Most assuredly I say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground it dies. It remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. You want fruit? Allow Christ to have preeminence in your life. Live Christ daily. If we walk by the Spirit, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It really is that simple. And if we'll allow... Christ to have preeminence in our life and we will pursue him and get our eyes and attention upon him and what he has already done for us and live the promises of God we don't have to keep beating ourselves up we can walk in victory I like to walk in victory I really do See, Galatians 2.20, I've used this before and I'm going to say it again. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is Christianity. According to the Bible. More than a feeling... We have the entire history of all that God has done. And the promises of God are to everyone that calls upon the name of Jesus. We are sinners. And that law was used to bring us to the fact, to educate us that we are sinners. Because God said we're sinners. And then we've proven it because we can't obey the Ten Commandments. But Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He came to give us the seed, the promises of God that we can live by. You believe that tonight? Let's bow our heads in the presence of God. I feel the Spirit of God in this place tonight. God really does love us. Real breakthrough is Christ breaking through in us to be seen by those around us as we live Christ daily. Tonight you may be here under the sound of my voice and you've come into this building or maybe you're online watching. You may have even said, well, I'm a Christian. Why? Because you've gone to a Christian church at some point in your life. But tonight, the Spirit of God is dealing with you about the fact that without Christ, you don't have life. We're all sinners. But a Christian is a sinner saved by the grace of God. And tonight, God may be speaking to you. You're lost. You're without Christ. And if you died today, you're not going to heaven unless Christ is your Savior. He's the only one that can save. He's the only one that can deliver. Christ, the anointed, 
Jesus, the only one born of a woman, created by God, the seed. If you're not right with God tonight, there's sin in your life, you're separated from God, or maybe you just say, well, I'm a Christian because I go to the church or whatever. Tonight, the Spirit of God's dealing with you. Dealing with you. Convicting you of your sin and your need for a Savior. And that Savior's name is Jesus. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And tonight, you're lost. You're without hope, without God. But you would like to be born again. You would like to Christ to be birthed within you. You want all that God has for you. Tonight, you want to give your life to Jesus. I wonder if you'd lift your hand up all over this building and say, you know something? I'm not saved tonight. I'm not right with God. I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I need Jesus tonight. Would you lift your hand up? Anyone at all? Be honest before God. Maybe those of you that are watching online, you're not right with God. I don't know who you are, but God knows who you are. But if you'll pray this prayer with me in your home or wherever you may be and mean it with all your heart, I believe God will touch you. God will forgive you. Christ will come into you and you will be born again, a child of God. If you're in this building tonight, you can pray this prayer with me. If you're not saved or you're backslidden, simple prayer to believe God pray this prayer with me right now Jesus I thank you for your grace I thank you for your love I come before you a sinner lost no hope but Jesus you died to give me hope you died to give me life. And I ask you for that life right now in Jesus' name. I believe you died on the cross, rose again from the dead for me. Save me. Forgive me of all my sins. I am sorry. I want you to be the Lord of my life from this moment on. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul the Apostle wasn't always a Christian. He had papers, legal papers in his hand, an army with him to go into a city to arrest and put to death every Christian he found. But on the way to that city, a bright light shone round about him and knocked him off his horse. And before he hit the ground, the seed of Christ had been birthed within him. How many people, how many testimonies of people that he had put to death and he stood there and hear them cry out to God and talk to, to, to Saul of Tarsus the whole time saying, Jesus loves you, Saul. You may kill me. I'm just getting to heaven sooner than everybody else. But Jesus, how many times did he hear those testimonies and they beat on him and beat on him. And then, then when God met with him and knocked him off that horse, he cried out to God. First word out of his mouth is, Lord, who are you? I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. And then God began to speak to him. This Saul of Tarsus became the great Paul the Apostle. He had a revelation of Christ in us, the hope of glory. For the first time in his life, he had relationship with the living God, not religion. If we will focus our attention upon Christ in us, 
We don't have to add to this thing or beat ourselves up. We can walk in victory, the victory of the cross. The Bible says the power of the resurrection dwells within us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells within us. And if we will focus our attention upon Christ, the seed, he's given us all the faith we need to believe. We can add to that faith by hearing the word of God. It's a glorious life that he's given us. It's powerful. We're going to stand and and open up the altars if you want to talk to God for a moment. You don't have to come down and beat yourself up. Just come down and say, God, I just want to know you. I want to walk in your power. Teach me how to be in Christ. This is where victory is found. This is where true peace is found because the Prince of Peace is within us. Let's stand in the presence of God. Awesome is the sight. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our voices. Let's sing this with all of our hearts. Of your holiness, majestic is your purity.
Glory to the risen Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Idioria rabo sanda rabo rea rabo rea rabo sanda. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. I just want to say one thing to you tonight. Your personality is you. God never takes your personality away from you. And if you will live your life and live him through you, he will never interfere with your personality. You've got the most freedom that you'll ever find in life and yet at the same time, you're living in a power that is so beyond you. This life is a supernatural life. This isn't playing church, folks. This is the living God dwelling in us. And when that begins to spring forth, it's the life of God in us. That's what they see. But then they see your personality. They mix together perfectly. Live Christ daily, and you'll never fulfill the lusts of the flesh. This is the Christian life. Amen? God bless you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. I'm going to dismiss... Uh, just uh, one uh, important announcement uh, is uh, if uh, uh, you weren't able to but now are, uh, I was told by uh, Brother Martin Sanchez that there are a uh, few rooms that uh, you can book for the upcoming marriage retreat, so uh, 
either talk to him or go online and uh, to the church website and you can, uh, they'll give you directions and you can uh, make your reservation. We're going to be dismissed. I just want to encourage you this evening, uh, you know, that what uh, Pastor Larry preached uh, uh, it just dawned on me that, you know, the key to the whole Bible is so simple. The key to the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is one thing, Jesus. He is the key. I was thinking of that scripture in 1 Corinthians where it talks about how they all drank of the same spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ, that seed is Christ, uh, and uh, we're glad for that. Uh, uh, one of the things that has been brewing, I just want to sow a little seed here tonight, is through uh, a number of open doors and then prior investment as uh, Brother Larry has gone into India. We've been allowing things to cultivate uh, and uh, are at the stage right now that uh, because of his uh, ministry there, the relationship that's grown, there are uh, 27 churches uh, there in southern India that uh, are basically going to be coming under the oversight of this congregation and uh, having a presence there number of people have uh, asked and heard about uh, him going into India, what can I do? And so what you can do is pray because at the end of the service next Sunday, we're gonna take a special offering for the upcoming conference there. It is a combination youth rally that Pastor Julio Blanco is gonna preach followed by a pastor's rally and underwriting the expenses of that uh, and uh, just uh, following those uh, breadcrumbs and seeing where they lead us and I believe it's to good things and so we want to be dismissed uh, a whole week ahead of us uh, to serve God. I try, I'm not always uh, successful but Sundays uh, is to write down my to-do list. How many have a to-do list? Uh, and uh, I gotta be really honest with you is sometimes uh, if I have a week and I'm able to cross off two things on the to-do list, major success, major breakthrough, but I love putting it together, just saying, you know what, Lord, what are you going to do this week? Uh, what do you have for us? Uh, and as we're dismissed, as you hear me say over and over, a whole week before us uh, to serve God and to let the Lord use our lives. And so let's uh, bow our heads in dismissal. Brother Manny Montoya, would you lift your voice? Ask the Lord's blessing as we go. Yes, amen.